Hi, I'm Bryn Brown. When Mike and I founded Frontier Justice, we opened our first retail destination in Lee Summit, Missouri with the words faith, family, and freedom on the awning. Those words are the principles that guide everything we do. Freedom is a nod to law enforcement and veterans who use the tool that we sell to protect our freedoms in this country. On behalf of all of our clientele and staff, we would like to say, Thank you for your service. Out my right side, I got an enemy in the tree line. I'm letting the gunner work right now. Bam, 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 bam. He's working, he's working. I'm out. I was a 20 year old first lieutenant. I was single. I was flying the finest ship the Army had. And uh, in my world, I was bulletproof, invisible, and immortal. What's going to happen is going to happen. Uh, and, and I didn't. I didn't dwell on the potential. When you're 19, 20 years old, you don't. You're invisible, you're bulletproof. Uh, you, you don't dwell on the potential. We got him inside. There he goes, right now that clock. Put us on the road. Kill him. I was born April 8th, 1948, Memphis, Tennessee. And then we lived in Monticello, Arkansas. Uh, I was there until the sixth grade. We moved to Hot Springs, Arkansas, and I graduated from Hot Springs High School in 1966. And I, I went to Arkansas Tech uh, uh, right out of high school, and, and I did very well in ROTC. And I joined the Sport Parachute Club, and, and, uh, but I was not a scholar in those days. And pretty soon it occurred to me that uh, parachuting and ROTC was telling me I probably needed to do something else than uh, go to college at that point in my life. And, and so I enlisted uh, in February 67 in the Airborne Infantry, off to Fort uh, Polk, Louisiana for basic training, and then to uh, advanced training at Fort Lewis, Washington. And that's where I was selected to go to Officer Candidate School, which was the big break in my life to go to OCS, commissioned as a second lieutenant of armor, uh, in uh, 15 December 1967, and then further selected for flight school, where I spent all of 1968 at Fort Walters and Fort Rutgers, uh, becoming an Army aviator. Today, most of the Army's chopper pilots begin their training here at Fort Walters, Texas. I done crashed my whirly bird. I done crashed my whirly bird. And my IP, he got killed. And my got killed. Oh my goodness, what a thrill. Oh my goodness, what a thrill. I was always attracted to the helicopters, and I don't know why. The jets didn't seem to interest me, but I would always go and sit in the static display uh, helicopters. Uh, we were there, I flew the H-23 Hiller and flew uh, OH-13 for the instrument phase, and then A model and B model Hueys for the advanced phase, and then graduated 30 days leave and headed to Vietnam. When I arrived in Vietnam in, uh, on January 1st, uh, 1969, I was 20 years old and was a brand new first lieutenant. We landed at Benoit Air Force Base, Tonsonut, and then on the third day, I, I got a set of orders to go to the 1st Infantry Division. And I was mortified that here I am, a brand new cavalry lieutenant, going to an infantry division. As luck would have it, at the 1st Aviation Battalion, the S-1 said, uh, Mills, you're a cavalry officer. We're going to send you to the 4th Cavalry, which is our organic air cavalry troop. I initially flew Hueys. Uh, there was no vacancy in the scout platoon, and then I was tapped to command the scout platoon. We were based at Fuloy uh, Army Airfield, and the current organization at that point in time was to fly with a pilot, an observer in the front seat, and then a gunner in the back seat. Uh, I changed that and went with a pilot, the minigun, and a gunner in the back. We were always in a right-hand turn when we were scouting. So the position, as I viewed it, of the observer was unnecessary. They were always up in the air. They couldn't see anything. Uh, our mission was to fly the OH-6 aircraft, which is 
extremely fast, extremely nimble, and we flew at four to six feet above the highest obstacle in the, in the terrain, and we'd fly with hunter-killer teams of cobras and loaches together. And in Vietnam, we were to find the enemy and then to bring the rest of the forces to bear uh, that the division had to offer. The Hueys were called the Four Horsemen, the Cobras were called the Mustangs, and the scout pilots uh, picked up the name of the Outcasts. And the scouts were sitting around one day and said, we're nothing but a bunch of bleeping Outcasts. And that's where the, the name Outcasts came from. I served as a scout pilot in 1969. I, I went home to transfer to Germany to command a tank company, and I married my high school sweetheart. Uh, while we were in Germany, she was diagnosed with ovarian cancer. We were sent to Fort Sam Houston, where she died uh, just months later, two months later, very fast. Rather than, than sit around and, uh, and contemplate my future, I called Armor Branch and said, I'd like to go back to Vietnam. And so they gave me a tour at the uh, Cobra School uh, to transition into the Cobra aircraft, which I did. Went to the 101st Airborne Division in, uh, in uh, 1971 and flew Cobras until that unit stood down in February of 72. And I was offered the opportunity to go home as a second tour aviator. The war was winding down, but I had nothing to go home to. And, and I figured uh, I'm in Vietnam, I'm doing what I really like to do. So I picked up the phone and called Dark Horse, my first tour unit. So that's what got me back to Dark Horse. The beauty of a helicopter is the capacity to put it on the ground when the engine's been knocked out or uh, uh, some other mortal wound has, has affected the aircraft. And uh, in, in terms of catastrophic crashes, there were four, one in a Cobra three and an OH-6 where flight was immediately interrupted, uh, blades were uh, damaged and, and we went in hard. The rest were uh, aircraft unable to continue flight and so you pick a place and you put it on the ground and hopefully within moments, uh, your wingman or an, a rescue aircraft zips in, picks you up and, and, and off you go. The longest I was on the ground was my, my Cobra crash. My uh, second seat, uh, John Bryant, was trapped in the airplane with a broken back and we were on the ground for hours and it was an orchestrated crash. I, I was able to keep it upright, but I had no control over where I was going. Normally it was either AK-47, and, and if it was a really bad day, it was a 51 caliber uh, heavy machine gun. Uh, those will flat tear a helicopter up. The thing that got me with the, the Cobra crash is I shot myself down uh, because I had a hang fire. Essentially it was a jet assisted a rocket on my right wing that failed to launch. And that caused the other rockets in that seven shot pod to explode and, and took the tail of the aircraft off. And it fell to the Air Force to rescue us. Let me know when the PJs are in. The 37th Air Rescue Squadron in an HH-53 super jolly green giant. And I, as I was coming up the basket, I noticed this guy hanging out with a camera and he was photographing me and that's a terrific photograph. It was a type of flying in Vietnam that really was very, very uh, clandestine to most people because there weren't that many of us. And the attrition rate was extremely high. Scout pilots and medevac pilots, I think, were the most uh, heavily attrited bunch. I flew that until uh, September of 72 and came home to go to the Armor Career Course. A, a couple of the pictures show real stress. At the end of 12 months of combat flying, I was worn out. I, I, it was time to go home. It was time to to, uh, to do something else because it's very, very stressful. During three tours in Vietnam, I, I was shot down a total of 16 times. 
the first two Purple Hearts came from 1969. I was, uh, I was hit in the face, I, I bounced off my body armor. The bullet came in the front of the aircraft, hit the inside of my armor plate, went through my, uh, my right uh, cheek and out the back. And then the Purple Heart for the, uh, the Cobra crash uh, was 1972. I had 3,300 combat hours in Vietnam spread over three tours, and so I got 68 air medals for combat hours, and then uh, six uh, air medals, individual um, air medals for valor. The three silver stars were, were all earned in, uh, in 1969 in Vietnam. Three of the distinguished flying crosses were in 1969, one in 72. Uh, I was also awarded three bronze stars, one with V device, The Army sent me to Embry-Riddle University to finish a college degree. And while I was there, I met Sharon, uh, who would become my wife a year later. Uh, and uh, so I came away from Embry-Riddle with uh, a college degree, a fixed wing transition, and a brand new wife. Uh, and we've been married uh, uh, since April of 1974. So that's 47 years. Uh, I retired in 1993 as uh, a lieutenant colonel, and I had 26 years of active service uh, as an officer of the regular army. I wouldn't have changed a thing. I actually started writing Low Level Hell in uh, 1971, shortly after Margaret's death. And I re-energized to do the book in 91 it's called Low Level Hell, A Scout Pilot in the Big Red One, and it covers my first tour. In 2013, I was nominated for and inducted into the Army Aviation Hall of Fame, and that's probably the greatest honor. And the last aircraft I flew in Vietnam, 17340, the model of which is over my right shoulder, the actual aircraft hangs in the Army Aviation Museum at Fort Rucker, and it now hangs from the ceiling in the Vietnam exhibit. As far as I'm concerned, service to country is, is the greatest obligation of a citizen. Having served in combat, when I hear the national anthem, a, a chill runs down my spine. It always does. It always will. And all of those folks that don't want to be Americans and don't want to love this country need to, to go to some foreign country that first would educate them on how good they really have it. And secondly, I'll never run into because I'm not going to that country. I don't need to be around folks that don't believe this is the greatest country on earth. They only say that if they've never been anywhere else. If I had to look back on my career at the thing I am most pleased with or are proud of. It's not the Hall of Fame and it's not the awards, it's the command of the outcasts in combat twice. <laughs>